What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Ranton Review Podcast. We got a special podcast this week. We're talking about all the good stuff in the world of pro wrestling this week on this edition of the podcast. We have a special guest. You guys may have known because I referenced him about five times in the last month. Dave Kokotas from Coco Sports, longtime YouTuber, radio guy, actually was in the wrestling business and has worked with wrestlers. So he actually knows kind of what he's talking about. Dave, your, your, your return to the world of YouTube uh, <laughs> pro wrestling community. Yeah. Let people know about yourself and where you are, man. Um, well, I used to YouTube a lot, and then I stopped, and then I got back into it, and then we were attacked. I'm sure that will come up. And then I just started playing Twitch, and now I'm back. So basically, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, just look Coco Sports, you'll find me. But, man, I haven't heard my full name in forever. Because, like, I always tell people, call me Dave Coco. And when you heard my full name, I was like, oh, it's getting personal. That's <laughs> pretty, man, we keep it real here on the Rant Review Podcast. <laughs> it's all good. So let's get into it, man. Um, you know, you've been gone for a while. I, most of my listeners know uh, about the TV Asahi thing. I got hit with it. Uh, SOS Russell, Le- Wrestling Network got hit with it. Tyler got hit with it. You got hit with it. So, you know, very briefly tell us about the story. You did it on your uh, channel, but so I guess give us the uh, condensed version. You should go check out Dave's channel to find the full version. No at problem. Coco Sports on YouTube. The, <laughs> the first thing is I used to work in media, and um, I have friends in media, and I'm kind of a pain in the butt. I'm trying to not be a pain in the butt. I'm trying to, like, find inner peace and not be angry. But, like, I was just like, you know what? I have lawyers. I have translators. I live in Japan. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. We got a copyright strike. I called my friends at YouTube. They're like, oh, this is fair use. Then I called my friends at New Japan. It's fair use. Then, with a translator and a lawyer, I called Asahi TV. They said, I'm in the right. It's fair use. But there's nothing you could do about it. And then, basically... We have a strike on our channel. Um, YouTube says they're going to work on it because once I made a video and sent it to them, they're like, wait, what? So we basically talked to them. And after they were like, well, the rules don't apply. We can just strike down anyone. Then I was like, well, can I interview you? I want to know what your rules are so people that actually love your product and been following it forever know the rules. Because obviously the rules YouTube and the world set is not good enough for Asahi TV. So I was like, oh, can I get an interview? And they're like, no, you're too small. And I'm like, well, I used to not be small. And I was like, what if I get the interview through ESPN? Her first response, I don't know why, when you're a media, don't say this, just say I'm lying. Her first response was, what's ESPN? I was like, are you what (laughs) you know like it's so dumb it's so dumb and then i was like i can get nbc so then i called my friends at espn and nbc and they're like we'll send emails but they're like this is the new world giant corporations could come by and just destroy you because here's the best case scenario for you you take them to court you win that cost you thousands of dollars it cost them nothing it, so it's a horrible situation. And uh, YouTube out of the woodwork said, oh, we're going to work on it. But still, you know, Russell Ranton lost his channel, SOS. And the list goes on and on and on. And all I'm asking for, if you're not going to follow the rules, what are your rules? That's all. I, I'll, I'll pay for the translator. I'll pay, you know, I'll pay my own transportation. I will make this happen. I want an interview with someone with power in SI TV to say, what we can and can't do, not by the law, not by YouTube guidelines, by their own insane take everyone down thing. I have not got a return. A- ABC and e- I mean, sorry, not ABC. I didn't get ABC. NBC and ESPN have not got a return. So it's safe to say they could strike down anyone, and there's nothing we can do about it. And yeah. th- that was depressing. Yeah, there. Well, there's there's other aspects to it too because as what I found out back last year was that there's a there's a little page on the TVSIE site where somebody was sending links to uh, videos that had New Japan images or footage. So because we were trying to figure out why was it certain groups of people at a time. I mean, it's not just us too. Like Cult of Holocaust had, I know um, some of the some of those other like the major league wrestling channels they got hit. They took down a lot of their New Japan stuff, which is why nobody's talking about it. Kind of shooting yourself in the foot because it's kind of free advertisement to keep your company in, you know, 
well, talking I, points. And, so. and I, I just want to say two, a couple more things about Sahiti, if you don't mind. They've used my stuff before, and, you know, and I say this, and it's not an insult to you, but I feel like if your name's not Dave Meltzer, you haven't been covering New Japan as long as me. I, I might not be the best at covering New Japan, but I'm pretty damn old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And with that said, they have written me letters thanking me for the coverage. How insane is that? It's just insane. Oh, I've gotten. To, yeah, I, I won't mention his name again, but uh, certain people who are on the English broadcast team uh, reached out to me about this stuff. I heard from two other wrestlers in New Japan who said, "Yeah, we watch your stuff, man. I'm I'm sorry to have this happen. We'll see what we can do. You know, there's not much they can do because they're not in control of that stuff. But yeah. it's um, yeah, it's it's it, it, it was a weird thing. But speaking of New Japan, uh, you know, you've been. But, in and out of the loop a little bit. Yeah, but before we go to New Japan, I want to ask you a yeah, question yeah. about New Japan and this. Yes. I, I just took a break because Twitch, real life, writing, congratulations on your new book, by the way, um, yep. kind of took over. And I was like, you know what? I was at a point where I was like, how can I review New Japan and not have that anger in my heart? Now, you continued reviewing New Japan. How did you go about that? Because, like, I just took a break. I was like, this is silly. Well, my thing was too with, with my stuff because they went and found like a that the if, ironically enough the video that made my channel popular it was the uh, Omega Okada Road Two video that I did which you know Booms loved because he's like it's like a real documentary, but they found that and it was like really almost like three years old. It's just again somebody reported it, so I, I got hit with that. I was like all right, but I did you know it, it was copyrighted material so what i do now if most people notice this and notice by now is that i use um wiki commons because that's from photographers and as long as you credit the photographers tv asai has got nothing to do with that and it's on the videos at the end of the videos is in the description box so if it ever comes up again it's like no those aren't your photos that's this guy's photos from wiki commons that they took take it up with them and they gave the licenses for us to use them so i mainly use those or if it's something that's on a website that actually has the attribution to it to a photographer who does not work for New Japan or TV Asahi. That's the only time I use footage of that. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll keep doing it because I love New Japan's content and it has really nothing to do with the people. I'm on. It's kind of like WWE. I don't have anything against the wrestlers. The company <laughs> is one thing, but I enjoy some of the wrestlers and most of the New Japan wrestlers I enjoy. So I'm like, and plus, I was, I'm, and I'm not... I always try to be humble about this, but outside of like Tyler and maybe two other guys, two other people I see on YouTube, like we're the only ones that get more than like 50 views for New Japan reviews. Like most of the other stuff, and half of the other stuff people do too. It's not even somebody reviewing it; they just like put up pictures and results of the matches. And I'm like, that's not a review. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> oh, three and a half stars, great. You know, so like there's very few of us. And I was like, and there were a lot of people who were like. Man, I miss your channel. I was like, all right, well, I'll keep doing it, and yeah, you know, maybe I'll do other stuff. But I'm not pissed at them. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's a big corporate thing that there are people who are not talking to other people, and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Clearly, considering the people that reached out to me about it, so I was like, well, all right. Uh, before we go on, I just want to say, at least yours was successful. I took like. I don't know, a couple of you break and like, okay, dude, why not? I'll try this thing again. I had fun with it back in the day. It was a three minute video of me. And this was my opinion. I'm going to shut it down. I said, Ooh, the old new Japan belt or the Okada new Japan belts. I like a lot better. I understand they went with a lot of the old school designs. The internet doesn't seem to like it right now, but I'm sure it'll grow on them. That was my controversial take that was shut down. Like, no one even watched it. They were just like, oh, let's destroy thousands and thousands of videos for that. Yeah, they probably look, they were probably looking for, uh, they were looking for probably pictures of the belt and people who had anything negative to say about it, they wanted to take it. I get a sense that that's probably what it was because they were hearing a lot of feedback from the belt to like, let's get rid of it. Well, the yeah, funny part but... is if that's negative, <laughs> don't, don't listen to my Jay White video if that's negative. Oh yeah, we gotta talk about. I gotta talk to you about him too, because uh, yeah, we'll talk about. Well, let's talk about New Japan first. Right, so you have been watching the Grand Slam Tokyo show. I know you haven't completed the whole thing, right? No, I, I was like, I gotta do. I, I felt like I was doing homework. I'm like, I gotta do this before I go to wrestling <laughs> ranted. Uh, I saw, well, I saw a few of the matches. 
and you don't mind spoilers, do you? No, no. I, okay. I'm so far behind. I haven't been keeping up with it. Gotcha. So, uh, since you have left, uh, or during, you've been in and out, you know, obviously the pandemic issue is a big issue in Japan still. It's kind of weird because they seemed like they were ahead of us over here in the States about a year ago, and now it's completely flipped, where we have, like, actually, well, it's America, so we act like COVID doesn't exist, half of us, but, you know, we're just back to full crowds, everybody's yelling and screaming and climbing on top of each other and high-fiving and everything else, and in Japan it's still... Well, you can have 20% capacity, and you can't say anything. you got to use thunder sticks and clap, and you can do that, but uh, nothing else. So we've been living with this version of New Japan for over a year now. I have said that it's it's been – this is tough. Like the, you asked about how I was able to do it after the TV Asahi thing. It's harder for me to cover it after the pandemic stuff happened because watching New Japan – and I knew, people say that the, the Japanese audiences are quiet – but it is noticeable that you don't hear the Tana, Tana, oh, you know, you don't hear the normal New Japan crowd sounds, and it does have an effect. And having these limited capacity shows does have an effect. So, what do you think about? Because uh, you know a lot of people. For those of you who don't know, Dave does know people. He actually knows people in New Japan and doesn't fake it. You know people from New Japan business wise. Um. I have heard that the reason that they were trying to do these stadium shows is because limited capacity there can be 10,000 people paying as opposed to going to like uh, a, a Corican or one of these other places where they may be able to squeeze 2,000 people. They still need to make money. Do you think it was a good business decision on their part to try to do some of these stadium shows to kind of get the same size of crowd that they would have had if they could have had sellouts at the usual arenas? Um. Yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, Business-wise, it makes sense. Um, and also, another factor that a lot of people that you didn't bring up is they were open because of the Olympics. Um, yeah. The original plan before the pandemic was they were going to do a giant American tour. And then when the you know what happened happened, they just said, all right, what can we do? And then when the Olympics came, was it going to cancel? Was it not going to cancel? Um, the venue was looking for an events and they said, all right, we'll put on two big events, you know? So timing, timing had a lot to do with it too. Um, because usually any, any other time of the, any time, any time in history, there's no way they get to Tokyo dome with, con with summer concerts, with all the sporting events, but baseball in yeah. this situation, they they had it so they went for it so yeah that's a factor um as far as japan goes they look like they're doing better than they are <laughs> i don't know I don't, I, well uh, not on my not on my channel because um it is fairly known from my from my people that i am i'm using credit card journey right now to go to wrestle kingdom yeah but i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to go to wrestle kingdom well, if you do, you can crash at my place. Um, so that's one less thing you have to pay for. Um, well, I won't be paying. I won't be paying for it because hotel's free. <laughs> oh, look at you wheeling and we'll get, dealing. We'll, we'll get into that in the wrestling with finance stuff later. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I I have mixed feelings. Um, I'm glad they're doing it. So I, I got my two shots, which is very rare here in Japan. It's only because I work for a very expensive international school. Um, and I made a deal with the person I work for. I'm a retired teacher, but I'm filling in because there's a shortage. So I made a deal like I won't go to any big sporting events, you know, and the Tokyo Dome wrestling was considered one of them. Mm. But, yeah, um, you know, I'm hoping, you know, for new japan's future i'd love for this to be like their SummerSlam every year you know like hey you know we were here let's try to work out a deal so it would be it would be nice to see two dome shows and plus the yokohama field is very close to my house so yeah it would be nice to have two giant you know sporting events but then of course osaka and other major cities are gonna be like bro how much does tokyo need and tokyo people are like we need it all we need, <laughs> we need all, all the events like, uh, if you do come to Wrestle Kingdom, uh, one of the fun things that I don't know you could see on New Japan World 
is they, they give this schedule and people from Osaka come and people from all around Japan come. And when they give this schedule, whenever there's like Osaka, you hear like a little clap. And then whenever you hear Tokyo, they go in crazy. And then, like there's kind of a rival of who gets the big events. So, uh-huh. so it's kind of, I don't, I don't know if that comes across on new Japan world, but it's kind of cool in person. Cause oh, okay. like, it's just, it's just a reveal of a schedule and like, they're just excited and cheering and <laughs> like have a rival over that as much as like the matches. Right. That is pretty, yeah, I'm going to have to check that out because, uh, if we, if I get to go, if they lift restrictions and I don't, cause the thing is you have to quarantine for 14 days. I'm like, I can't take 14 days and be in japan for 14 days so yeah we'll see what happens um as far as the content though um the content there it's new japan you know they stole even with setbacks and losing people and you know the unfortunate thing of having about 35 percent of their roster being people from overseas they it's still new japan for wrestling they still have amazing matches the wrestle grand slam i know you haven't watched all the matches the the two, two final matches uh tanahashi and shingo they had a killer match earlier this year the one at the tokyo dome this past weekend that was amazing um the tag match with uh the techers versus uh los was one of the better tag team matches of this year you still get into great matches the uh atmosphere around this uh five you know doing these five match cards because this was unusual the last couple five match cards i don't know if you noticed but they've been doing these five match cards where only one match is really of any significance and then the rest of it is like multi-man tag matches that may or may not be setups for another match and another main event somewhere else which is really different because that was usually just the first half of the show and then the second half of the show you get like three or four matches of consequence and, and my, uh, my i just want to interrupt you sir uh, my yep. strong theory is you know i have a very strong theory it's not confirmed they just got to get the guys on the card you know there's so few matches get the main event and make sure that other people are on the card that's my super strong theory Go on. Yeah, to make, to make people get so people get paid, definitely. Um, but do you think that I don't? Because I I can read some of the Japanese uh, sites that talk about uh, Puro, but do you get a sense over there with the wrestling fans, the wrestling bars, except or you guys can't go there, but <laughs> but, the, yeah. but the people that you talk to about the wrestling about wrestling in Japan are is there this kind of lull in interest in New Japan? Because the big worry I have coming out of this, like the pandemic will end. And we're going to expect, like, oh, yeah, it's going to be just like WWE and AEW. The fans are going to come back, and it's going to be sellouts for as far as the eye can see. I don't know if that's going to be the same thing in Japan with New Japan when they can get full crowds again. What do you think? Um, It's a tough call. And the reason I say that is because back in the day, I'd feel more confident. I'd be going to wrestling bars three, four times a week, going to events. You know, I feel like when you meet hundreds of people, you kind of have your finger on the pulse more than, oh, these are my five closest friends, and this is what they think. So, right. um, I don't have my finger on a pulse like I used to, where I'd just go to event, 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 wrestle bar, wrestle bar, wrestle bar. Um, those days, we just can't do that. So, um, the small people that I am talking to, I talk to older people because I'm older. And they're kind of hoping that the, because like, and this is just my small, this is a small group of people, so small sample size. Uh-huh. Um, they're getting tired of the formula. It's like, yeah, if an American fan comes and they see the formula, yeah, that's new to them. But to us, it's not new. And then also, um, one thing that, you know, the Japanese fan base that I've witnessed do, they love long title runs. Where American fan base likes to switch those titles around. And it got to the point where, like, when the champion loses... Especially my older friends and my small group would just be like, what's the point? Like, Ibushi lost the title. You know, everyone loses the title. So I think they have an identity problem where do we have a long title run that the home base loves? Or do we have pass around the title surprises that the American audience loves? And I think once the pandemic's over, it's going to be very interesting which one they go with. And I... I think the first couple events are going to sell out, but it's going to be a lot of fans coming back for the first time. So it's going to have to be like, show me what you got. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. I really do think there's a split in the fan base because you hear, you know, cause like in Japan and like I said, my group is smaller now. I want to be honest. They're just like, well, if you're the best wrestler in the world, you should have the title. 
and then it'll have a list of four or five people that should be champ. And then when those four or five people don't have like a long title run, they're like, then what's the point? And oh. maybe younger fans, maybe when the bars open up again, I'll get a bigger, you know, feel. But in a small group setting, you know, maybe less than 20 people, you know, because you'd be surprised. I don't hang out with drunk wrestlers all the time if they're not at a bar. Um, I feel that they just want a, a, they want something different than the pattern. But American fans, in our eyes, granted, I'm an outsider and I feel like I'm in between. It feels like they're like, this is fresh. It's refreshing because they're coming from WWE. Right. So... Yeah, it's it, a different it's a different pattern and a different mindset towards uh, wrestling that they're not used to seeing over here. Yeah, so to to me, I think that balance is going to be very interesting because they have a challenge of two fan bases that love them, but two fan bases that see them differently, and how do you balance that? I think they, but I I, I think there might be some, it might be more optimistic. I might be more optimistic about that because which would dovetails into what we're going to talk about next. Um, there is, you know, the, uh, the Marvel's got the multiverse now. So does the pro wrestling community outside of WWE, of course, but we have the multiverse going on right now. So there's all, you got to keep in mind, there's like all of these people chomping at the bit who are in AEW who are at impact that want to go over to New Japan. You got Daniel Bryan wants to absolutely Daniel Bryan is trying to get to Wrestle Kingdom if he can this next year. Um, you got uh, guys like FTR who want to go there. Gallows and Anderson want to go back. Um, and of course, there's the looming everybody's hope that of this uh, belt collector thing that it will somehow wind up with Ibushi and Kenny at some point in time having a match against each other. Um, I, can, that, I, oh, can I just cut you off for a second? I'm a very old man. That's all I want for the rest of my life. If that's, if that's what happens, I will die a happy wrestling fan. Okay, well, I don't. Well, I don't have. I don't have much more to see. But that's what I want to see. Right. That well, that's what. That's what everybody. Too. Yeah, that's what everybody's into. Because the Forbidden Door, yada yada. That's all been done, and you know these guys have flat out said it. Uh, so, one of the many surprises that came last week. We'll start with somebody you don't like so much, <laughs> Jay White. Showed up on it like nobody had any clue that shit was going to go down. Like he just shows up out of nowhere on Impact, confronts Kenny, confronts uh, Don Callis and uh, the Good Brothers, and for the first time, seeing actually seeing him the the him now, as compared to the him three years ago when that all started, he is so more poised. He is so much. He has he is now that switchblade character. It's refined itself out of the the generic thing that it was when it started, and he can carry he can cut a promo. He can carry himself, and he doesn't look like he's like young boy with these legends. Now it's like the feeling I get and the feeling I've heard from a lot of the people that um, a lot of commenters is like Kenny and the Good Brothers. They're kind of like oh yeah we're Bullet Club yeah yeah. But then here comes the real guys that are still doing. They're still doing the original stuff, and it's like, um, I didn't say you could use that name. Y'all, y'all not part of us anymore. I, I'm what's going on now. So I don't know what you, how you feel about Jay. I don't know if you saw it or not, but how I, do you I feel did, about? I um, I want to say something because like my one of my first comeback videos was about Jay White, and I noticed, <laughs> I noticed the internet is tell us your opinion only if it's exactly like ours. Well, that's I, the internet, yes. I think. Jay White giving the IWGP title is a mistake. And I think he earned it now. The problem is you already gave it to him. I think he should be the IWGP champ now. But that's the thing. In a Japanese style of booking, you would have waited till now when he deserves it. In American style of booking, you got to be like, oh, we got to give him someone fresh. We got to give him something new. And he didn't deserve it. And that's the thing because people are like, oh, Jay White's awesome. And I'm like, yes, he is. He wasn't when he won the title. There's a huge difference. And people are like, you're just cranky. And I'm like, no, there's a difference of when you deserve the title and when you don't. When he won the title, he didn't deserve it. He totally deserves it now. And like, yeah, I think it's amazing. And one thing I love is I love the fact that Kenny Omega plays it off like... like oh, I, shit. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I love that he plays it off like there's a misunderstanding. Like, right. that's my favorite part. He's like, oh, brother Switchblade, brother Jay. He's just a little cranky. He's got a little jet lag. The fact that he keeps playing it off 
is just oh it's great it's great um yeah I, yeah i'm very interested i, I will say because we always talk about the jay white thing because you know my my counter argument to that was it was a money booking decision they had booked the madison square garden show kenny left they wanted okada to win the title at that garden show who do we put it on do we want to do tanahashi and okada we just did it eight times they don't know on the way up to the show so let's let's put it on jay because that's gato's boy and then he didn't deserve it but it was yeah. i mean i but at the same time it's like it's two different things because like content wise bad decision business wise i completely understand why they did it though See, so i i, I would have beat kenny in his home country yeah, but Kenny wasn't there at that point. No. I thought he, he was. was. Uh, well, according no, to Kenny, he 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 was there to MSG. Oh, he said, yeah, he said he was was willing to come back and drop the title at MSG, but then he's not on the contract, and you know, blame Brock Lesnar for that shit. You yeah, know, yeah, why, yeah. Well, last time we did, he didn't send the belt back, so you know, they're not <laughs> they're not gonna try. You know, and they and this is the thing about New Japan, like they get burned so many times by these gaijins. Even Kenny, who they thought was, oh, he's here, he speaks our language, he's one of us, he's going to be here forever, we can pay him pennies on a dollar. I mean, he was getting paid a lot, but he wasn't getting paid WWE, AEW money. And he'll just stay. And then he left, and they were like, oh, well, fuck you. And not only did you leave, you the Bucks went with you, you took Hangman with you, you took Trent, who was the mole, you took Trent with you, you took... <laughs> You, you tried to take Juice and Osprey, and they stayed. I mean, they took they took Lance Archer. You took all of our Gaijins that who they just build up Lance Archer yeah. and that U.S. title run. You took all of our. I understand why New Japan was pissed. <laughs> no, 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 I understand. But here's the thing: and they need to sign longer contracts. And the second thing is, yes. for younger yes. fans, you have a no idea how much Brock Lesnar damaged New Japan with trust oh, yeah. and branding and issues like. Man, that 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 man left left the destruction in his way. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, that's that's a lot of what's going on. But they kind of rely on the Gaijin thing. But that's another topic for another time. Uh, I did want to I do want to ask you about because now we've seen. I don't know if you uh, again. I'll fill you in if you don't know. Uh, Hikaleu was in the crowd last week on Dynamite. He will be taking on Lance Archer for the U.S. Championship on Dynamite this week. You got Jay White over an Impact. You had Kenta show up in AEW before. You got the New Japan Strong Show, where basically that's where the gorillas and those guys are kind of hanging out at. And, of course, you've got, uh, well, evil. And uh, other people, more, more, Taiji Ishimori and El Fantasmo in Japan holding it down for Bullet Club. So what I'm kind of looking at is, like, this looks like a chess game where they're, like, putting pieces here. They're, getting, they're trying to recruit Chris Bay. They're putting pieces all over the place. Is there a potential that we could get a to a one up the NWO invasion? This is just a massive bullet club invasion from all fronts. They're like trying to take over Impact and R R O H and AEW and New Japan at the same time. I never thought about that, but oh my god, I just fucking I'm like yes, <laughs> like, <laughs> never crossed my mind once, but yes, I'm just so happy they're working together. Um, yeah, it's just. I think we're about to see some really exciting things and it's, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan, you know? And I even heard, I don't, I don't watch it, but I even heard uh WWE is improving. So, um, uh, uh one show. Okay. One show. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him that one show and then raw the next night was like, uh, 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> You're like I'm out. I don't know. I was, I was told if you only watch SmackDown, it's more enjoyable, but, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to fall for that trap. Yeah, SmackDown's the better. Well, yeah, it's the whole show. It's the only reason why SmackDown is better than Raw is because, as we all said for years, turn a Roman heel and let him be himself. And then they finally did it, like eighty-five years later. Surprise! Everybody likes it. He's the best thing in W. I, God, could you imagine like five years ago us saying Roman Reigns was the best thing in WWE? No. Like he legit, he is the him and Heyman, and it's not even a lot of Heyman. Heyman doesn't say a lot. It's Roman and the story with the Usos. It's a family story. Everybody can relate to it. And we know where it's going. They're doing this thing now with him slaying all the legends. He's sl going to slay Edge. He slayed Daniel Bryan. He's going to slay Cena. He's going to slay Brock when sl Brock comes back, leading up to The Rock. It's a great storyline. That's some. That's pretty much one of the two things in WWE that I care to see is this Roman reign. This Roman reign, the reign of Roman reigns. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be going on from now until WrestleMania. If it is what they're saying, it's going to be that he's just going to be slaying down 
all these ex champions, and Vince wants him to be like the greatest of all time. I'm down for that. I I am I am very I'm very happy because he's some people you meet and they're absolutely scumbags, and some people are the Rock and Roman Reigns. Uh, I met Roman Reigns at FCW. He's a great guy. He just can't read a script. Him being a heel, him having success brings me happiness. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just glad that they, they did it. But yeah, for the longest time, you know, anyone with half a brain is like, stop making him act like Cena. <laughs> right. And our irony of ironies, who comes back last week? John Cena and 99% of the people around. <laughs> I'm like, we are in Bizarro Land. Wait a minute. Roman is a heel, and it works. Cena comes back as a face, and most of the crowd loves him. And as long as he's only around for, like, this month, and then after SummerSlam he goes away, he'll be, fi- he'll be fine. It'll be yeah. a good run. It's, he it's can't all, be it's around all, all the time. It's almost like if you have a good guy on 90, 99% of your airtime and he never loses, that it might tarnish him. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why you would think that, Dave. What? What? <laughs> gee, it's like that sounds like logic. I don't get that. <laughs> uh, good luck. Good luck, WWE. Uh, yeah, good luck. I mean, if, at least they're doing they're, they're doing one thing that I actually will tune into, and then the rest of it, I'm not so sure. Uh, NXT has been battered to hell. It's it's so sad to see what they've done with NXT, carrying Cross and Keith Lee making their debuts and jobbing out in under five minutes. Both. It's like. I don't know. They're still WWE, but um, the the fun the funny thing is, it just reminds me of a meme. They like have New Japan Impact, and it's like everyone like working together as a team. It's a bunch of kids playing and being happy. <laughs> and then WWE with its own brand. It's Raw just punching NXT in the face. Pretty much, it's like uh, you lost the Wednesday Night War, pal. <laughs> Guess what? You know that, and that and everybody suspected that's what the reason it is because. They didn't take out AEW like Vince thought they were, and now NXT is like the step redheaded stepchild of WWE. It's well, pretty well, sad. Well, when AEW takes out Raw, well, who's gonna, Vince going to take it out on? <laughs> yeah, that's here's a good question because um, I don't know how, how much you've been following ratings or not, but here's the thing: like Cena got the got Raw a bump, but the bump was only 1.9 million, right? The bump's going to go down over the next couple weeks. Plus, they're going to be going up against football eventually. The Olympics are on, et cetera, et cetera. AEW, the last couple of weeks, has been nothing but going up. Last week, they were, the week before last week, they hit over a million. Last week's show was 1.14 million or something like that. The gap is not that big. <laughs> you're really talking about, and I've said this before, you're talking about one, AEW needs one knock it out of the park storyline. And that gap is almost nil. Yeah, and and there's strong and there's strong rumors that they're going to be working with New Japan. There's and when I mean strong rumors, it's almost guaranteed. There's strong rumors about New Japan. There's strong rumors about Punk. There's strong rumors about Daniel Bryan. And here's the thing. I don't think it's if. I think it's when. I think without a doubt, AEW takes out Raw. I could be wrong, but if I see Vince McMahon and I, I said this earlier in another video. I see Vince McMahon as the New York Yankees, the Tokyo Giants. Uh, for those that watch baseball, they are sleeping giants with lots of money failing. Someone yeah. has to poke them and motivate them. But here's the thing. Just like fighting Asahi TV, eventually you just get old and don't give a shit. Does Vince have one more giant battle in him? And I don't know if he does, but I don't think it's a will. I think it's a when. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with that because here's the one thing that I think – this is a lot of reason why people ask why All Elite Wrestling – why is All Elite Wrestling done? Impact didn't do it. Jim Cornette couldn't do it. Russo didn't do it. Bischoff couldn't do it. Dixie Carter couldn't do it. Jeff Jarrett couldn't – why AEW? Why did those guys do it? Here's a secret that I think when I'm – because, again, I, I, I don't just watch wrestling all the time. I started looking at like a lot of long because I'm doing a lot of Walking Dead stuff now that's been on for like, God knows how like twenty five thousand years now and what? trying to figure can, out. Can I just say something about Walking Dead? Yeah. Once they left the prison, they should have started with the new characters. Like as soon as they left that prison, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, but I read. I, see, I I didn't read all the comics, but I knew with the storylines of the comics, <laughs> and I was like, No, I want to see that happen. Got it. And got I think it. I think the thing with, but I think the thing with the TV show, which Walking Dead. Um, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, all of these like very long forms, forms of uh, fiction. 
the core of it is that there's this kind of family at the group at the center of it all and you like the characters you like like people like the walking dead they watch because they want to see rick and michonne and carl before they died and daryl and carol people like lord of rings they like gimli and legolas and and all the people People like harry potter they like harry and hermione it and stuff Original Star Wars. Why did original Star Wars work and not the other ones? Because the original Star Wars, Han, Leia, and Luke, Chewbacca, they all felt like a family. The other Star Wars, does Poe even know? Uh, what's her face? Uh, what, what the hell was her name? Hey, uh, Ray. Ryan, I, I got an idea. Why don't we hate each other and make a trilogy and I'll write part two? <laughs> there you go. And, and just leave like, it like, I, I think I think, though, for this to work, we have to stop being friends and despise each other. All right, you do yes. part one. I will hate you. I'll do part two, and then you get revenge in part three. I mean, exactly. the, the only the only winner there is the reader or the viewer. Well, I think yes, and I think those things. But that's you're touching to the core of it. I think that's why it works. I think that's why AEW works because at the core of it's the elite. Their most emotional storylines are the ones that involve Hangman, Kenny, the Bucks, Cody when they're going at each other, because that's like the core family, and people like that group. Or for better or worse, sometimes they like them, sometimes they hate them. And seeing that core group go along, I think that's why AEW is able, and they're just very good at storytelling. I think that Kenny will talk, talk about it. Kenny's, Kenny Omega says he doesn't like wrestling as much as he likes telling stories. He's a very good storyteller, and very, except for the women's division. <laughs> I think that's the reason why AEW has been able to do what it does, because they understand you. That's why there are all these factions. You want relationships. You want to see... Uh, even though Co- Cody Gover does it sometimes, but you want to know that Jungle Jungle Boy is tight with the with the Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt. You want to know that um, you know the best friends are tight with Orange Cassidy. But what happens when one of them turns on the other one? You have an emotional tie. Suppose the WWE, where everybody's just kind of off doing their own thing. If you are a team, you're a team for a, a month and a half before they split you up. People don't even know you're split up, you know. There's no emotional tie to any of the wrestlers except for the stuff they're doing with Roman and Usos. So I think that's where why AEW's been able to be as successful as it is. And I agree with that. I just want to add another aspect. You have no idea how rich this family is. And outside of the family being crazy over the top rich, um, he's actual legit wrestling fan. Like yes, so you have you have the perfect guy. It's like Tony Khan, super wealthy family, you know, and then you have a guy that absolutely loves wrestling. You got to think he's a better Vince McMahon than Vince McMahon. He has more money and he loves the product more than him. Yeah, he's a millennial Vince McMahon because the two two things that they have in common, which I've noticed this amongst a lot of people who are very good at multitasking because I do a lot of it too. He don't sleep either. Vince doesn't sleep. Tony Khan doesn't sleep. Elon Musk doesn't sleep. I don't sleep. None of it. It's like, just, uh, hold on, hold on. Did you just compare yourself to Elon Musk? <laughs> yeah, so I, I have a right. rocket. I have a rocket. No, I'm talking about just people who are just. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just teasing you for the sake of teasing yeah. you. But if you're going to do it, like, if anybody knows this, like, if you like into multiple things, like, I write books and I do this and I do this and I do this, like, Elon's doing rockets. And just, anybody who does like a multiple things like that, there's only one way you can do it. You just don't sleep. Yeah. So. That is the point. Vince hasn't run into anybody else like that because Dixie Carter wasn't doing that shit. Even Bischoff wasn't, you know, living and eating and breathing, dying WCW. He was doing other shit and like, eh, you know. But now you got Tony Khan, who's uh, like you said, he's a uh, he's a hardcore wrestling fan. Call him a money mark if you want, but the guy had a vision for what he wanted. He See, took base he took basically his wrestling federation he made when he was a kid and made it reality, which all of us wish we could do. I I I don't I think people throw around that word money mark. I don't think that's accurate. It's like if he's making horrible business decisions, that'd be one thing. But if you take out wrestling and it's anything else, if let's say this was the XFL and the XFL had the success AEW did, I wouldn't call you a money mark. A money, a money mark would be like Dixie, where she doesn't know what she's doing, she has money, she's driving herself bankrupt. Trust me, if Tony Khan walks away from AEW this second, and like, let's say he's like, dude, I, I really hate the fact that Coco Sports has a YouTube channel, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that happens. He's set for the rest of his life. Very I true. think a money mark is someone that does bad business decisions, and on top of that, is losing money that they can't afford to lose. 
Yeah, that's what the term money mark is supposed to mean. Of course, people, you know, you know me and, and wrestling people with word definition, they don't know half the fuck of the words they're talking about anyway. Fucking Bill money, Gates, you money mark. <laughs> <laughs> money mark is like, I, like you said, money mark means somebody who's like, like they won the lottery. Like, I'm going to throw a wrestling show, make zero profit, go in a hole about $30,000. That's a money mark. Uh, Tony Khan, uh, Tony Khan is a very smart businessman who has a, a passion for wrestling. He's Vince. He's a millennial version of Vince. That's just not as tall and not as obsessive about really weird stuff. Well, that we know of really weird, perverted stuff like Vince's. Vince's world is a, stra a strange. Just one. steal a line from Golden Star Alex. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah, give it time. I'm sure his stuff's going to come out eventually. That Tony Khan's into some weird stuff that we don't know about yet. But um, so the last little bit about this, let's talk about uh, what are your thoughts on. The rumor that's pretty much almost not a rumor anymore, but Punk and and Brian coming in. Uh, it, do you think it's going to be a tidal wave or is it going to be a trickle? Because my contention was, remember back in '94, Hulk Hogan, who arguably is the biggest, most popular wrestler in the entire history of wrestling, arguably, 1994 he went into WCW. It took two years for WCW to you know even put a dent in WWF. So I don't, I mean, if Hogan and Savage and all those guys that came in WCW took them that time, it's a much smaller wrestling audience now. It's a different audience. So I can't really use that as a gauge, but I'm kind of using that as like, okay, history says that that doesn't necessarily mean overnight shift, but it's a different generation now. So is it possible, do you think, that AEW is going to get like a 500,000 viewership boost from Punk and Brian coming in, or is it going to be something that they're going to come in, they're going to get up, they're going to pop a rating, but it's going to take good storylines with them over time for that to happen. I, I think they pop, they pop a rating the first week, not, not, you know, not 500, maybe 200, you know, they're, they're going to pop a small rating. And then if they handle them correctly or book them correctly, then that, that small pop will eventually grow. That's that's my that's my thing. Um, the only thing I think Daniel Bryan, no matter what, is going to help them. I think CM Punk is going to. But the thing is, no one has seen him wrestle in a while. I hope that he. I don't care that he wrestles all the time, but I want him to see him wrestle the way he does wrestle, and I want to see you know I want to see CM Punk and Daniel Bryan not wrestle all the time just because they they're older you know i want right. to see them wrestle less but wrestle like their old selves does right. that make sense yeah they'll be able to do that too because if you have one match a week as opposed to five on the road you yeah. can do that you know um yeah i think that's a i think that's a good point i'm i'm expecting brian to spend a good portion of his time in new japan though. <laughs> so i don't know how much you know he'll be doing something here and there punk I may be in a minority on this, but I never thought Punk was the best wrestler in the world. Far from it. Um, his match quality. The main thing. The main thing I want to come out of this. I told Janet Jerusalem about this the other day. I was like, you know what? I really want out of this. I want Punk and Bra Danielson to go over to New Japan and have a match against Shibata and Kenta, just so Kenta and Shibata can do something to tell Punk. You, you know, you guys stole all our shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the. But and that's a good thing. That, that that is a thing. We will finally get a. We can get Danielson and Kenta now. We can get um a, a lot of these matches with Daniel Bryan that we wanted to see. We can probably see Kenta and CM Punk do a go to sleep. Well, Ken, Kenta, 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 and Daniel Bryan have fought before, and it was yeah twenty stars out of twenty stars. I don't really rate. Yeah, it. but yeah, Punk Kenta would be great. The I, I said this, it's a little mean spirited, but I don't think I'd be me if I wasn't mean spirited. I don't want to see CM Punk be Kenta 2.0. I want I would rather see very little of CM Punk and be the CM Punk I know and love than see too much Kenta and well he is what he is. <laughs> Hideo Otami. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I feel bad because like I I'm as excited for Punk and Daniel Bryan to return as much as I was excited for Kenta. And I don't want to be hurt again. I don't want Aww. to be hurt again. I just, yeah, I'm just i not strong was... enough. I'm not yeah, strong Kenta... enough. I, I, I still think, well, I think they did the best thing with him by putting him in Bullet Club. I didn't see it coming. I think that, I think yeah. the reason that didn't really go anywhere is because 
and they're still doing it to this day because they just had a thing the other night with uh, Tanahashi match against Kenta. They keep teasing Shibata coming back to fight Kenta, and I think we well, most of us don't think that's ever going to happen. But if you're not, it's not going to happen, then stop teasing it because we're kind of waiting for that to happen. I want to see, I, I absolutely want to see Kenta versus Shibata, but we're never going to get it, so stop yeah. teasing it. <laughs> so I, I mean, I mean, I I agree with you 100, percent but I'm just going to throw out another scenario which isn't good but just throwing it out there um maybe they keep teasing him because a he needs job he needs to be remembered by and maybe kenta goes in a feud and he costs him i mean that will be like the worst silver medal ever but <laughs> <laughs> it's a small possibility but who knows maybe he'll come back i mean people never thought edge would come back people never thought daniel bryan would come back you yeah, know. that's true. The wrestling is full of, uh, you know, Shawn Michaels on and on down the list. People we never thought would come back, but they do. But yeah. uh, and, and, I know you got to. Uh, no, I was, was going to say one more thing. And uh, in Japan, I have concussion problems. It's that's why I stutter and mess up and sometimes repeat myself. Um, I have really bad concussion problems, and he has bad concussion problems. And as a person that moved from America to Japan, the concussion, like technology and the concussion protocol and the concussion doctors are so far ahead of everyone else. So when it comes to concussions, at least he's in a really good country that cares about it. Um, I feel that my memory, it's bad, but it would have been worse. Uh, my headaches is bad, but it would have been worse. So, um, you know, sometimes I talk bad about Japan and I know like a lot of foreigners really love Japan and hate to hear people talk bad about it. But the concussion doctors here are beyond amazing. 10 out of 10. There you go. On that note, I know you got to go. So uh, we're going to let you go. But uh, tell people once again where they can find you now that you are back. Uh, for for the time being, you're back into the wrestling chat and the uh, crazy world of talking to the online wrestling community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm slowly but surely. Uh, YouTube Coco Sports is where we mostly talk wrestling. Uh, Twitch Coco Sports is where most of my time is. I also have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Coco Sports. Um, so please check it out, DaveCoco.com. And yeah, basically, if you go to any platform and search Coco Sports, if the algorithm likes me, you'll find me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Dave. We'll be sure to catch up with you again soon. No problem. Thank you, sir. See ya.